بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد we have been reading in the chapter the author he mentioned رحمه الله باب صفة صلاة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the chapter of the clarification of the description of the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We continue reading and the author he mentioned an Aisha radiyallahu anha annaha qalat. He mentioned the narration of Aisha radiyallahu anha and that she said Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yastaftihu salata bit takbir. That the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to open up the prayer with a takbir, meaning saying Allahu Akbar. وَالْقِرَاءَةَ بِالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَدَمِينَ And he used to open up the recitation, meaning the recitation of the Qur'an, with الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَدَمِينَ وَكَانَ إِذَا رَكَعَ لَمْ يُشْخِصْ رَأْسَهُ وَلَمْ يُسَوِّبْهُ وَلَكِنْ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ and uh, if and whenever he would make ruku' he did not raise up his head nor did he lower it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but rather it was between that wa kana idha rafa'a ra'sahu min ar-ruku' lam yasjud hatta yastawiya qa'iman and uh, whenever he would raise his head sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the ruku' he did not prostrate until he were he was up standing straight parallel until he was standing up straight completely وَكَانَ إِذَا رَفَعَ رَأْسَهُ مِنَ السَّجْدَةِ لَمْ يَسْجُدْ حَتَّى يَسْتَوِيَ قَائِدًا and that whenever he would raise his head from the sajda from the prostration he would not uh, prostrate again for the second time until he is sitting up straight entirely وَكَانَ يَقُولُ فِي كُلِّ رَكْعَتَيْنِ التَّحِيَّةِ And he used to say in every two raka'a التَّحِيَّةِ يعني التشهد وَكَانَ يَفْرُشُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُسْرَى وَيَنْصِبُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُمْنَى And he used to lay his left leg flat صلى الله عليه وسلم and his left foot as well and he used to lay his left leg and foot flat and sit on top of that and he would set up his uh, right foot, meaning that he would uh, point his toes on the right foot towards the qibla and uh, erect the foot uh, in in the air with the, or uh, the heel will be erected or the heel will be up in the air, and uh, his toes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will be facing the qibla. She said, radiyallahu anha, wa kana yanha anuqbati shaytan, and he would prohibit. Uh, from the sitting called Ukbati al Shaytan. Wayanha and Yefteri Sharajulu Diraihi Iftirasha as Sabur. And he also prohibited Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from a man uh, laying down his arms in the manner of one of the ferocious animals, Sabur, and he, like the dog likewise, in the manner like the dog or like the animals, uh, how they would lay down. Uh, with their uh, with their legs straight and their front legs straight and flat on the ground, this is prohibited likewise. وينها أن يفتري شرجل ذراعيه افتراش السبع. And he would prohibit uh, a man from laying his hands down and ar- from laying his arms down on the ground in the manner that the predator animals, in the manner that the pred- predatory animals lay their arms down. Likewise, like the dog. Like the dog, how he lays his front legs down, this is likewise prohibited. وَكَانَ يَخْتِمُ الصَّلَاةَ بِالتَّسْلِيمِ وَكَانَ يَخْتِمُ الصَّلَاةَ بِالتَّسْلِيمِ And he used to close the prayer, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with tasleem. Meaning saying, assalamu uh, alaykum wa rahmatullah, on the right and on the left. So we see in this narration, the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, there is the clarification of the description of the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is clarified in much detail, and this is in order for a Muslim to learn in this manner and to see with clarity the methodology of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the prayer and to see how his companions have witnessed him pray 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order for uh, in order to strive against his soul uh, to comply to that statement of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli and uh, pray in the manner you have seen me pray so here we have Aisha radiallahu anha narrating uh, the the prayer of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and explaining that in some detail Therefore, a believer, he will strive to understand the likes of these narrations and then likewise strive against his soul to rectify his prayer and to establish the salah in the manner described in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. So we see she mentions many benefits with regards to the description of the prayer of the Prophet wasallam. كَانَ يَسْتَفْتِحُ الصَّلَاةَ takbir. That he used to open up the prayer with a takbir, and uh, we've seen uh, the, some of the issues with regards to this, and that means Allahu Akbar, and that other statements are not sufficient. And what is being referred to here, and what is being referred to here, bit takbir, a takbira al ihram, and we have seen uh, the issue of that in the previous class, and uh, this is the understanding of the statement, likewise of the hadith of Ali that we've seen as well. Radiallahu anhu, that he mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about the salah, and he said, وَتَحْرِيمُهَا التَّكْبِيرُ وَتَحْرِيمُهَا التَّكْبِيرُ And entering into its sacred state, the sacred state of salah, and he beginning it, it is with a takbir. And this is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would open up the prayer. And likewise, this is a reminder for a believer to bring his heart alive and to have a presence of mind whenever he's in the prayer, beginning with the glorification and the praising and the magnification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remember whom he is standing before and who he is uh, worshipping, Allahu Akbar. And likewise, she said, radiallahu anha, that he would also open up the qira'ah. وَكَانَ يَسْتَفْتِحُ الْقِرَاءَةَ بِالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That he would open up the recitation with, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ so we see here there's no mention of du'a al-istiftah, but it has been clarified in other narrations, and from that, uh, the narration that we have seen yesterday in the previous class from Aisha. And in that narration, she mentioned that he, he would make the opening prayer, uh, the opening supplication uh, before the recitation of the Qur'an. And likewise, it has been narrated from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam between the takbir between the takbir and the recitation of the Qur'an, there was a moment of silence. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was reciting something there. This all has proceeded and been clarified, alhamdulillah. But as for the manner of opening up the recitation, وَيَسْتَفْتِحُ الْقِرَاءَةَ بِالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And he would open up the recitation, meaning the recitation of the Qur'an during the prayer, with الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And likewise, there is an evidence here for the position that the people of knowledge, they mentioned that the, the basmalah is not recited in the salat audibly. It's not recited out loud in, in the prayer, but rather it is recommended to be, recited, to be recited silently. And inshallah, this issue will come in more detail. So this is how he would begin the prayer, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with takbir, glorifying and praising and magnifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then with an open, opening supplication, dua, and then whenever he would begin the recitation of the Qur'an, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَيَسْتَفْتِحُ الْكِرَاءَةَ بِالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And he would open up the recitation with الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Then she mentioned, رضي الله عنها, وَكَانَ إِذَا رَكَعَ لَمْ يُشْخِصْ رَأْسَهُ وَلَمْ يُسَوِّبْهُ وَلَكِنْ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ and whenever he would make ruku'ah, and whenever he would make ruku'ah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would not raise his head. He would not raise up his head, nor would he lower his head, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but rather it would be between that. لَمْ يُشْخِصْ رَأْسَهُ أَيْ لَمْ يَرْفَعْهُ أَشْخَصَ أَيْ لِرَفَعَ وَلَمْ يُسَوِّبْهُ أَيْ لَمْ يَخْفِضْهُ Meaning he did not lower it. Rather, she says, رضي الله عنها, وَلَكِنْ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ وَلَكِنْ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ But rather it was between this. But rather it was between this. Meaning that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he would make ruku' he would bend down and he would bow in a manner that his back would be flat. And likewise, while his back is flat, he would not raise his head sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nor would he lower his head, 
but rather his head would be flat with his back. Many people, whenever they go to Rukua, they will make their back flat and then they raise their head up in the air. They raise their head with their chin up and their head is poking up in the air. This is not from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is this is makruh, makruh in the ulama. The people of knowledge they dislike this. For one to to even if his back is straight, but then he raises his head up in the ruku, this is disliked. Likewise, to lower the head down far, likewise is disliked. But rather, the back of the head will be flat and smooth, straight, parallel with the back. And this is the manner of the of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Likewise, he will not bend down until his back is going down, and he will not uh, uh, bow. And, and, until uh, he would uh, le- be leaning up some, but rather he would bow flat until his back is straight. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his head likewise is straight and parallel with his back. Salawat Allahi wa sallamuhu wa barakatuhu alayhi. So this is the meaning of the statement here of Aisha radiallahu anha. Wa kana idha raka'a, wa kana idha raka'a lam yushkhis ra'sahu, ay lam yarfa' ra'sahu. وَلَمْ يُسَوِّبْهُ أَيَانِ وَلَمْ يَخْفِضْهُ وَلَكِنْ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ Whenever he made ruku' he did not raise up his head, nor did he lower his head, but rather it was between that. Meaning his head is flat and parallel with his back. صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان إذا رفع رأسه من الركوع لم يسجد حتى يستوي قائما and whenever he would raise his head from the ruku' sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would not go down to prostration until he is standing up straight. Until he is completely standing up straight. So therefore he would not hasten, he would not raise his head from the ruku' and, and then go down to sujood before standing up straight, but rather he would stand up straight entirely. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would move from the ruku' back to the position of standing entirely until he is standing straight. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then after this he would make sujood. And uh, this is an indication of the obligation of at-tumma'nina, of at-tumma'nina in, in the prayer, meaning having tranquility. And uh, the intent of the people of knowledge with regards to al-tumanina in the salah, having tranquility, is that one will move from one position to the next uh, completely. Completely. And he will not move to one position until he gets uh, back to the position that he was in. For example, one will not, uh, one will not go to sujood until one raises entirely from the ruku'ah, like is mentioned here. He would not uh, do as some people would do, and they would raise up, raise their, hair, their head only a little bit from the ruku'ah, or halfway from the ruku'ah, and not stand up entirely, and then rush down to sujood. La, this is not proper, and this is not correct, but rather, tumanina and fulfilling this pillar, is to raise entirely from the ruku'ah, until one is standing again in the standing position, and then go back to sujood. And this is what is intended here. And this is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, this is a pillar from the pillars of the salah. Ruknun min arkani. As-salah at-tumanina. At-tumanina. But likewise, she mentioned radiyallahu anha, wa kana yakulu, wa kana idha rafa'a ra'sahu min as-sajdati lam yasjud. Wa kana idha rafa'a ra'sahu min as-sajdati lam yasjud hatta yastawiya qa'idan. And whenever he would raise his head from the prostration, he would not go back for the second prostration until he has sat up entirely. Until he is sitting straight up entirely. So again, the indication of it, tumanina, Meaning that whenever he went to sujood, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he would raise from sujood, he wouldn't go down to make the, se- the second sujood until he had raised up and sat up properly and straight. Uh, some people, they will go to sujood and they will raise up, raise their head just a bit or raise up halfway and then rush back down to sujood again. This is incorrect and this is not proper and this is not giving uh, the prayer its right and this is not even fulfilling the proper, uh, the, the, this is not even f- fulfilling the pillars in the proper manner. This is a great deficiency. But rather, the correct way is to raise from the sujood until one is sitting up straight in this manner. In this manner, as Aisha radiallahu anha, she is narrating. وَكَانَ إِذَا رَفَعَ رَأْسَهُ مِنَ السَّجْدَةِ لَمْ يَسْجُدْ حَتَّى يَسْتَوِيَ قَائِدًا That he, whenever he would raise his head from the prostration, he would not go back down to prostration until he is sitting up straight. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So therefore a believer, he will not rush. He will go to Ruku' and he will not go to Ruku' and come back up real quickly. But rather he will go to Ruku' until he is in that position properly. And then he will make the adhkar that are legislated and then he will raise up. And he will raise up entirely. He will not raise up partially and then rush to the sujood. But rather he will raise up entirely until he is standing up straight again. Until he is standing up straight again. And then after this he will go down to sujood. And he will have his body parts in the proper position for sujood. Inshallah the, the narration will come with regards to this. Uh, ta'ala, until he is in sujood and he properly. And then he'll make the adhkar properly and then he'll raise. He will not raise up partially. Rather he'll raise up all the way until he's sitting up straight. Until he's sitting up straight and then after this he will go down to sujood again. And this is the proper manner. And this is what this narration indicates here. Walhamdulillah. Then she mentioned all the Allahu anha. وَكَانَ يَقُولُ فِي كُلِّ رَكْعَتَيْنِ التَّحِيَّةِ And he used to say uh, after every two rak'ah, التَّحِيَّةِ التَّحِيَّةِ يَعْنِي التَّشَهُّدِ التَّحِيَّاتُ لِلَّهِ وَالصَّلَوَاتُ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ يعني Until the end of التَّشَهُّدِ And this is well known. And likewise, there is an issue with regards to this in this chapter as well uh, that we will discuss بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى The issue of التَّشَهُدِ uh, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Ta'ala. And then the author he mentioned وَكَانَ يَفْرِشُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُسْرَ وَكَانَ يَفْرِشُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُسْرَ وَيَنْسِبُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُمْنَى وَكَانَ يَفْرِشُ Hakada it is in the text here but likewise uh, this verb has come يَفْرِشُ uh, وَيَفْرُشُ مِنْ بَابِ نَصْرَ وَمِنْ بَابِ ضَرَبَ Here we see وَكَانَ يَفْرِشُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُسْرَ وَيَنْسِبُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُمْنَى that he used to lay down, he used to lay his left leg flat, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his left leg and his foot. He would lay it flat and he would sit on that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَيَنْسِبُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُمْنَى And he would set up his right leg, meaning that he would lay his left foot and left leg flat and, and sit down on that. And then his right foot, he would erect his right foot with his toes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, facing the qibla in his heel would be in the air and his heel would be in the air sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, this issue here this is with uh, regards to a tashahud al-awwal to the first tashahud and likewise this is the manner to sit uh, between the two sajdas between the, the two sajdas as for a tashahud al-akhir the last tashahud if there are two of them then one will make tawarruk. Then one, he will make tawarruk. And this has come in the hadith of uh, Abi Humaid, radiyallahu anhu, collected by Imam al-Bukhari, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the last tashahud, or in the second tashahud, if there are two tashahud in the second one, which would be the last one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would make tawarruk. And this means that he would bring his left foot forward and he would sit on his bottom, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his left foot forward, and his right foot still in the same manner, with the heel in the air, and the toes facing, uh, and the toes facing, facing the qibla. He would bring his left foot forward underneath, until it's underneath his uh, right leg, in this manner, and sitting on his bottom, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in that relaxed manner. This is known as at tawarruk and this will be in the tis, the second tashahud and the prayer that has two tashahud uh, it will be in the second one meaning it would be in the second tashahud of maghrib and isha and uh, dhuhr and uh, asr as for the first tashahud then there is no tawarruk and likewise as for in the fajr prayer then there is no tawarruk then there is no tawarruk Likewise, we see here that كَانَ يَفْرِشُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُسْرَ وَيَنْسِبُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُمْنَ That it is his left foot, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his left leg. And this is the one that he would lay down flat and sit on. And the right leg would be, would be established and be erected. The right foot would be erected. As for erecting the left foot and sitting on the right foot, this is contrary to the sunnah. This is contrary to the sunnah. But rather we see here, it is the left leg and foot that is laid down flat and that it is the right foot that is erected with the toes facing the qibla. Naam. And then she says, radiyallahu anha, wa kana yanha an uqbati ash-shaytan. And he used to prohibit, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from a sitting called uqbati ash-shaytan. Uqbati ash-shaytan. And to sit in this manner. 
and it is ascribed to shaitan and need to, to clarify that this is not a proper manner to sit and that a believer should not sit in this manner in, in imitation of shaitan and uh, likewise uh, this is something that uh, is not praiseworthy and it's not it's not praiseworthy that's why it is ascribed to shaitan and likewise it is not permissible for a believer to imitate to imitate to imitate a shaitan the people of knowledge have mentioned the ukbatu a shaitan this is that this is whenever a person he will sit down on his knees and put his uh, both legs flat with his uh, with his uh, toes behind him and he will with his uh, the top of his feet flat and his legs flat and then he would sit between them with his bottom on the ground he would sit in between his legs with the bottom on the ground or some people of knowledge mention likewise even if he erected his heels and pointed his toes forward but then he spread his legs and sat down with his bottom on the ground this is all considered urqba to a shaitan and if that one would sit down on his knees with his legs spread and uh put his bottom on the ground this is not permissible to sit like this uh, in the prayer in the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he forbade that and mentioned that this is the sitting of shaitan ukba as shaitan ukba as shaitan other people of knowledge have mentioned that this would be to uh, sit uh, down on one's knees and with his legs flat and straight back sitting on his legs and uh, with his uh, toes behind him uh, and sitting on his heels they have described the Rukhba shaitan to have this meaning and others have mentioned rather sitting in that manner but with his toes forward poking up his heels and then still sitting on his heels and they have mentioned likewise that uh, this is uh, another interpretation of Rukhba shaitan that is impermissible uh, in, in this position Likewise, uh, she says, رضي الله عنها وينها أن يفترش الرجل ذراعيه افتراش السبع. And likewise, he would prohibit صلى الله عليه وسلم from uh, he would prohibit a man صلى الله عليه وسلم from laying his arms down in the manner of the ferocious animals or the predatory animals like the dogs and and the, and the vicious cats and the likes like this. And how whenever they sit down, they put their arms flat. So therefore, whenever one is in prostration, he will not put his arms flat on the ground, and his hands and his arms flat. This is impermissible. But rather what is correct is to have the arms up in the air, and to spread them, and to have the hands flat facing the Qibla. To have the hands flat. As for laying the arms down and the hands down on the ground, then this is something that the Prophet Sallallahu he prohibited. And this is a sign of laziness and, and, and the likes. But rather the correct way for the sujood, inshallah, will come with some detail in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas and all the Allahu anhuma. Uh, and it will come, inshallah, in a few narrations. Is that one, he will put, he will prostrate uh, on his palms with his hands, uh, with his hands spread away from his body, of course, without hurting his neighbor. But with his hand, his elbows in the air and his and his arms away from his body, he would prostrate with his hands on the ground, with his elbows in the air, and his arms away from his body. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his belly would not be touching his thighs. Also, there would be a, a place between there, and he, that between his his thighs and his belly would not be all would not be gathered together. Uh, rather, there will be a, a a gap between his stomach. Uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his thighs and his hands will be flat and his forehead will be on the ground with his nose sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the knees and the toes will be facing the qibla will be facing the qibla in this manner in this manner and then she said radiyallahu anha wa kana yakhtimu salata bit taslim and he used to close the prayer with a taslim he used to close the prayer with a taslim with taslim. So we see here that he opened the prayer with takbir. And then there are certain uh, types, and then there are certain statements that are to be recited, legislative, specific statements that are recited from the dua, istiftah, and likewise the recitation of the Quran, particularly the Fatiha, and then another surah. And then likewise there are other afkar, and then as well there are also movements that are specific, that are made uh, all the way until the end of the prayer, and it is closed with a taslim. And from this narration, the people of knowledge have mentioned that uh, the ulama, they have, uh, they have derived the definition of a salah, the legislative definition of a salah from this narration. 
And the, le- the legislative def- definition of a salah is عِبَادَةٌ ذَاتُ أَقْوَارٍ وَأَفْعَارٍ مُفَتْ مُفَتَّحَةٌ بالتكبير مختتمة بالتسليم مفتحة بالتكبير مفتحة بالتسليم that it is an act of worship that consists of statements that consists of specific statements and actions that is opened up with takbir and it is closed with a taslim and this is what is clarified in the narration here of Aisha radiyallahu anha and we close with that هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم